Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and I go by Rachel Ray on the internet and today is Saturday, March the 12th. <laughs> welcome back to my channel if you have been subscribed and welcome if this is your first time. I hope that you enjoy it here. Um, I am an American that lives in Ireland and I like to craft. <laughs> Um, this is my channel all about crafty stuff, so please make yourself at home. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I am going to be giving you some really interesting information today regarding, like, everything. So stay tuned. Um, I have a very special uh, raffle that I am kind of excited to get off of the, off the presses and uh, raise some money for animals in need in the Ukraine. So that is mostly what we're gonna be talking about today, but also I have lots of works in progress, a new start, a finish, and I have some knitting to share with you too. So I hope you have something nice to drink and let's jump into it. So this week has been a very busy week, crafty wise, and also kind of dreary outside. So. I live in the southwest corner of Ireland and there's a lot of rain. Like we get a lot of storms. Luckily we didn't lose power this week, but we did actually run out of gas. We run our heating through radiators and we also cook with natural gas as well. And the, the water in our sinks, our taps are uh, heated with natural gas as well. But as you know, the prices of natural gas has increased, including petrol and diesel and things like that. So uh, we, we did get it filled, thank goodness, uh, but it was a little scary there for a few days. I'm drinking tea today. I am frozen. But uh, I'm looking forward to doing this video. This is my second time recording this, so I do apologize if I'm a little low energy. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to try to pretend to forget everything that I talked about so that we can just get excited again. So first things first, let me tell you about this raffle because I am really excited. I was thinking about like, what can I do? What, what can I possibly do to help people in Ukraine? And in, in fairness, there has been a very big turnout and a wave of support for people um, especially refugees who are leaving, um, lots of support there. Uh, the people, I mean, my heart breaks for them, truly. And I think that it's important to remember that those people also had pets and sometimes they get left behind in wars and things. So, there are a few charities out there that are helping the animals, and I thought that maybe we could do something as well. My audio has cut out for some reason on the original recording in some places, so you might hear me voice over a little bit here, but uh, I'm about to show you the first prize for the raffle. Is a little stitch that I started and finished. And it is called Seek Peace by Aya Rosen. And this was a free chart from her Gumroad account. I'm gonna show you how to get to it here in just a minute. But some stats on this, this is a 32 count ornament cut from Fortnite Fabrics. I don't know the color name. They didn't tell me it was just in a grab bag, uh, but it is a 32 count and I used Tren Trinway I think that's how you say it. Trinway Silks in Mina Harper, that's the gold. And the blue is from Coffee Craft Fabrics, and it, it's unnamed. But thank you so much to Coffee Craft Fabrics for sending me that to try out. I love that blue, it's so pretty. I hope that you will continue to dye fab, uh, flosses as well as fabrics in the future. You can find them. Fortnite and everyone else in my link haven if you would like um, and I'll show you how to get there too but this is a finish a finish but not a fully finished object so if it was a fully finished object I'd have it framed or made into a pillow but 
Uh, if you've been here for a while, you know that I don't really finish things fully very often. And I thought that it would be better if the winner of the raffle or one of the winners of the raffle will get this and finish it themselves in the way that they want. So you can frame it, you can put it behind glass, you could make it into a pillow, you could do whatever you want, flat fold, anything. Um, but I thought I'd leave that creativity up to the winner. I stitched this in three sessions and it was a very fun stitch. Since you don't have to fill in and there's not, not a lot of color blocking or anything, it just made it go really quick. Here we have it, ayarosen.gumroad.com. And you can see that Aya has several patterns here. And this one's called Peace. So it's this beautiful dove and the words. And uh, she said, please don't pay for this pattern. If you want to donate money to Ukrainian refugees funds, amplify Ukrainian voices on social media, call your representatives about assisting Ukraine and taking refugees to seek and pursue peace. So that is the, that is the site that you would go to if you want to download the chart and stitch it for yourself. Like I said, it was, it was a really fun stitch. So, um, yes, that is, that is that. <laughs> Next up, I had a new start. This one is actually, let me go ahead and show you. I'm going to do everything on the computer today instead of doing post editing because second time, uh, here we go. This is the quirky Quaker mythical creature set by Darling and Whimsy Designs. I have already done the Loch Ness Monster, and now I'm starting the Unicorn. This is just a fun little stitch to do. Um, I didn't remember how little they are until I started it. This one is making my heart so happy. So I've got the border almost finished. This is three two lengths so far of floss um, and I am using for the border I'm using Fiberlicious in Whispers just that really pale pink and pink blue green pink blue green um, and then there's a second color in the pattern and it is going to be My Funny Valentine by Leo and Roxy. So the border, oh, sorry. <laughs> the inside border and the unicorn body are gonna be in this bold color and then all the rest is gonna be in this kind of cotton candy color. And I am stitching this on a, I believe this is 32, it could be, I believe it's 32 count. Um, and I cannot remember. Again, the audio cut out here, so I'm really sorry about this, but basically I was just saying, I don't have this written down anywhere, so I'm not sure what it was. I probably talked about it when I did the other piece that's on this fabric, which is the four boys and an NL girl 2020 woodland creatures stitch along. I only got this little piece done back then, but, um, if I go back and watch floss tube, then I could probably figure out what this is stitched on, but uh, it's an opalescent. It's really shiny and pretty. It's a bluish green and the modeling is perfect. And I thought it would go well with these two colors. And yeah, I'm really enjoying this project. Sorry about the audio again. Okay, next up is Riolis Unicorn. Uh, it's PT0024 if you're looking on Amazon. I have a link for this in my whip list. There's only one available on UK Amazon as we speak, but um, I'm going to probably tell you why. <laughs> Let me show you. So this was uh, number 15 on my whip go board this month. It was called... And this is my progress 
I'll try to hold it still so that you don't see things behind it. I have done about 200 stitches since the last time you saw it and it still doesn't look like anything. It's not going to look like anything until it's done. But essentially, um, there's a few things about this pattern that I find incredibly challenging and it is making me work through my resistance against paper patterns and blends. There are also going to be beads and metallics on this as well, but I started in the middle up there and I am working down and I am currently in kind of the belly thigh area. Let me show you the picture. Uh, I hope you can see my cursor. I am somewhere in, do you see that pink part in the middle of the unicorn? There's a pink part and then there's a white part and there's like cream parts on the back in the abdomen. That's where I am right now. And it's, even though it's 14 count Ada, it's very easy to see. I just get very frustrated um, because it is a paper pattern, but I'm working on it. I hope you didn't hear that. <laughs> the needle minder was a gift. This is an Agnes Little Minders polymer clay, beautiful needle minder of a dragon with a crystal on its back. And I love it so much. It's so pretty. So this is my update. Uh, I need to keep working on this about 300 more stitches to reach my WIPGO goal for the month. But today, well, yesterday started the WIPGO weekend. So I am going to be working on uh, this project today. And hopefully I'll reach my goal by this evening when my eyes start crossing and then I can move over to knitting again. So that is the realist unicorn but like I said uh, you can find that PT0024 on Amazon if you are interested let me go ahead and get our next picture up I don't think this page doesn't have it very large let me find a bigger picture there we go all right that's fine so the next one I have coming up is my Zen, or sorry, Japanese Zen Moss Garden Chatelaine. And I am working it on the black fabric. So that is what it'll look like. Um, that is the mock-up of the, of the actual chart. Um, you can see, if you go into Google and you type in Japanese Zen Moss Garden Mandala, or cross stitch or chatelaine, you will see progress pictures from other stitchers and you can see how absolutely stunning this is. Like, oh, that website doesn't work anymore. Um, you can see how sparkly it is and you can see where I am going next. Uh, I am going to be going into the ponds, which are on the outside. And I will show you more detail in just a moment. But if you are looking to purchase this, you could actually go Sorry about all the noise. My, my husband decided to leave <laughs> in the car. Uh, this is a great place to order if you are in the United States, European Cross Stitch Company. You can order everything here. You can get the chart, thread pack, bead pack. Um, you could get it without Gloriana's. I have everything but the beads. So that is where I am. So let's have a look at it. This is my focus piece for the year. It's 28 count black Zweigart Jobelin. Move over a little so you can see better. It's hard to get this to focus uh, in this camera, but I promise you I will get better, better pictures of it at least or um, video of it as we move forward this these wings here <laughs> are the sand zen gardens there's a rock and you can see where the rake is going through the sand you know the lines 
That's what the swirls are. And at the top of each swirl, there's a big bead. I, as for me, what I did is I filled in all the specialty stitches. I came around with the Gloriana Spanish Moss and I linked up the border and it was perfect. My counting has to be perfect on this. And then I came in with Mahogany. This is a water lily or no, a water flower, sorry, water flower. It's a wool cotton blend, I think. I don't like them. They're very thick, but you know, it's gotta be in there. Here we go again. <laughs> I'm using all of the called for flosses for this project. So everything, everything that was called for, I am getting. There are two that I'm waiting on for the center. Um, there's a, like a, another petite treasure braid and a silk lame that I have ordered, but it's back ordered. So next I'm going to do the pond that goes around, like I'm showing you on the outside and it's super sparkly and lovely. I cannot wait. I don't remember what I was talking about here, <laughs> but, oh, I think I was talking about the things I was ordering, but, um, yeah, I'm working from the inside out like they do in the classes because the, the design, the chart is kind of written like a story. Um, uh, I'm leaving the beads to last. I, I think I've mentioned that in every video, but just in case you are just seeing this for the first time, uh, I'm leaving the beading to last and yes, I'm going to work inside out. Um, I think I also was talking about the method for how I tie back the fabric. I just learned it from Needle Ninja on YouTube, Needle Ninja X Stitch. Um, I'll show you that in just a minute. I really don't know what I was talking about here. So <laughs> this is, it's so awkward. I'm really sorry. Uh, basically, I think there's a problem with the, the new computer setup and it just kept sped, speeding up my voice. So uh, this is really awkward, but yeah. So Needle Ninja's method for holding back the fabric, it looks so much more tidy and the strings don't get in my way. The ribbons don't get in the way at all when I'm stitching. Um, but I find that it, it holds back that fabric and it keeps it from being awkward like the way that I had it before. So if you've watched previous floss tubes, you will have seen like loads of extra fabric everywhere, but not anymore. So definitely check out our video. I'll have it linked down below. The next thing I'd like to show you was the first thing that you probably saw, oops, probably saw, which was the Lord Libidin free cross stitch pattern. If you click in to the free patterns, you'll see. Okay. So those are his alphabets clearly. Uh, let's go. Can I click? Oh, there it is. Free epic Pokemon generation cross stitch patterns. So you go to lordlibidin.com or you can go to Google and type in Lord Libidin Pokemon cross stitch and it'll come up. I'm doing generation one, uh, but you can see that he's got lots of generations here. Um, this is a huge, huge chart. The finished size on 14 count is 46.4 centimeters by 81.6 centimeters or 18.3 inches by 32.1 inches. I am doing the generation one color extended pattern. So let me go back and show you what this looks like. The color extended pattern means that there is more empty space around the outside than the first pattern, which means you get the whole body of each Pokemon instead of having it cut off. That's good if you want that depth but it does make it a little bit bigger. 
the way that I kind of circumvented the difficulty of that, like the size of that, was by dyeing fabric and leaving that space empty uh, instead of stitching on it. So I promised you I'd show it out of the Q-snap. It's been a while, a little bit messy. I'm sorry about that, but there is method to my madness. Oops. <laughs> sometimes so this is the this is the cross stitch I work on on my twitch channel twitch is where I go live twice a week and on Thursdays I cross stitch so you're more than welcome to follow me on twitch and watch me stitch live I diamond paint on Tuesdays and I stitch on Thursdays and sometimes I play video games as well but uh, I do what I can. <laughs> um, I am stitching this in aid of child's play. I'm trying to raise money for the kids and we have raised $441 so far. My goal is $5,000 by the end of the year. So in the last stream, I finished the flame, uh, here on Moltres, just like the fire goose. <laughs> and, uh, I, I am trying to go in a diagonal like this but basically I just go color by color and Pokemon by Pokemon uh, these are waste away threads so what I do is when I get close to the end or I need to finish a color I will leave about an inch or so out or an inch and a half I guess of thread out and then I will stitch over the this the thread in the back and if I can if I can stitch to the next place that I use the color if I can count there which is why the Ada is so good on this project um, I will park that thread so that's what the long threads are about I don't know how much more parking I'm gonna do we'll see the needle minder I actually got as an enamel pin from Gwen touch in France on Etsy and this is 18 count Ada that I dyed myself using the Dylon machine washing machine dye. Here's our fabric. Just to give you an idea of about how big this project is going to be. So these, this doesn't seem to be triggered by anything that I was doing, but anyway, um, I left plenty of border room because I like to use key snaps and it gives you plenty to grab onto and still be able to stitch around the edges. But yeah, this is for scale, <laughs> what it looks like. And, um, I do, I do really like this. I like the fact that, um, the outside edges are, you know, empty. It's just fabric. I think it makes it pop a little bit more. So let's, uh, let's just go ahead and jump into details about the raffle. And that way you can make an informed decision whether or not you would like to participate. I'm using a website called Raffall. <laughs> This is a UK site and it allowed me to create a charitable raffle. So as you can see, it says enter to win animal rescue Ukraine. So the, like I said, the charity is Four Paws International and 100% of all of the proceeds from this raffle are going directly to them. You can enter the raffle at one pound, one British pound per ticket. And that is about one euro 16, one dollar 30, a dollar and 30 cent, a dollar and 60 cent Canadian. And I forget the other, the other currencies I looked at the first time I did this, but there are three prizes um, that you are entering to win a chance at getting. Uh, one, the, this one, mystery box of diamond painting accessories from Mrs. Coffee. And I'll include things like storage trays, pens, etc. Um, she said that she had, she wanted to clean out a bit. So she'll be putting together a box and she is willing to ship internationally, which is great. Thank you so much, Mrs. Coffee. 
I also have the the cross stitch that I finished, Seek Peace and Pursue It, and also a diamond painting. This is Diamond Art Club's Scooby-Doo, and I will give you more details about that. There are 500 tickets available, and so my goal is to raise 500 pounds for the charity in a week. So do you think we could do it? I believe that there's a maximum that you can only purchase 5% of the total amount of tickets. So that means that you can only get 50 tickets, I believe. I may be wrong on that, but I believe that I read that somewhere. So if you see that there is a limit or they're not allowing you to buy more than that, then I do apologize, but at least you will get entered to win. This way also, because I was really worried, like, how am I going to do this? I thought that if I did auctions the way that I used to, where I would, you know, have an item on Instagram, and then the price would go up and up and up, and then the winner would pay all. Um, I felt like that wasn't really appropriate, because not everyone can participate in auctions. And I thought that this would be a much more inclusive way for people to participate because all you really need to do is buy one ticket and you're entered to win. So if this works, then I may be doing this going forward, especially when I'm doing charity things, because it would be simpler and it gives everybody a chance. So fingers crossed that this works out just fine. So that is about the raffle. If you would like to enter, please check out the link in the link description. Thank you, or in the, the video description. Thank you so, so much for your interest. This Pokemon stitch is one of my WIPGO pulls. It's number 21. Um, on my WIPGO board, I wrote Tricky. And this project is actually in my Tricky bag that I got from the Black Needle Society. So. Um, that's why I included this. Also, I really wanted to get 500 stitches on this. I've already got 325 so far this month, so we're looking good. We're looking good. I want to work on this probably tomorrow because it is with Go Weekend. Also, I'm going to work on the real Lucy Unicorn today since this Whip Go Weekend and get probably about 300 more stitches on this one. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best. Because I wanna knock out my WIPGO projects during the WIPGO weekend, and then that way I can focus on other pieces later on. Um, later on in the week, oh, I should have said the raffle is gonna be pulled next Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, Saturday the 20, bear with. 19th, sorry, the 19th. And it does say that on the raffle thing. I would like to keep going. I'm going to keep going on my Zen Moss Garden uh, because that is my focus piece, but also. Oops, 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 oops. 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 <laughs> my, my unicorn was digging into my keyboard and it was like cycling through all the buttons. It's <laughs> like, what the heck? Also, I would like to work on this project again. So I've been thinking about Grimm's Fairy Tales Stitch Along by Clouds Factory. I'm gonna try to put this together so that you can see it properly. The first time that I did this, I was lazy and I don't wanna be lazy this time. This is a Stitch Along from 2020. I joined all the stitch alongs in 2020. Is that sufficient? I think that'll work. So this is a 2020 stitch along and I am in the month of May, according to the release schedule. I would really like to get some more work done on this. Even if I have to make this into like a 25-7 situation where I work on it 25 minutes a day every day, or mostly every day, I really want to get this finished. It is beautiful, but I want it out of my whip pile by the end of the year. 
So this is also a really great summer stitch. I find myself drawn to this in the summertime, but I don't want to leave it all for the summer, if that makes sense. So especially since the Zen Moss Garden Chatelaine is my focus, and since I have to work on that during daylight hours, <laughs> um, summer, spring and summer are going to be the best time to do that. But um, this one I really, really, really want to get done. It drives me nuts because there's so many color changes. So, so many color changes. And I don't like that about it. But if I can get each part done, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to set a goal of like finishing a part every month, but I do really want to get some progress on this. So uh, this is coming back into, into play again. And that marks the end of the cross stitch, I think. Let's see. Let me talk about this first and then we'll talk about what I worked on. This that I'm wearing is called the Plumatisse Shawl by Melody Hoffman. I, it was my first time doing German short rows and I clearly was knitting very tight at the bottom corner here. So it doesn't sit straight. It should be straight. <laughs> oh, well, what am I going to do? I'm not going to tear it out. Um, I might knit it again someday. I mostly wear this as a scarf anyway, but it is fingering weight held with mohair. So it is very fuzzy. The yarn is Ruby and Roses. She is based in the US. She's a very young dyer, but incredibly talented at dyeing. Okay, I think this is the last time that I have to do an audio cover, but hey, it's super fuzzy. It's super warm, especially in the winter. And I'm like adjusting myself. Um, I really enjoy wearing this shawl, uh, definitely makes me feel a lot more like, I don't know, happy and stuff in the winter. Let me show you my work in progress. Uh, too bad you can't hear the zip. It's a really nice loud zip. <laughs> is that what a zip sounds like? Anyway, this is my Slip Stravaganza shawl by Stephen West. The Slip Stravaganza shawl pattern was a 2020 mystery knit along and I love it. I love the colors. I love how stunning it is. Isn't it gorgeous? Just absolutely stunning. So you can see I'm spreading it out so that you can hopefully see what it will look like when it's blocked out. It's going to be huge, first of all. Um, there's about 500 stitches on the needles and that's why it's all bunched up and I'm trying to give you an idea that that section is called the checks and then below that is triangles you can see the kind of diamond shapes but I think that the checks look like fish bones <laughs> so I've been calling them the fish bones and the teddy bear is my stitch marker so where I was last time I've done 24 rows since last week that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was trying to think of how many rows, um, which 24 rows doesn't seem like a lot, but when they're like 500 stitches long, it's, it's a lot. Um, what else? The color, the, all of the colors in this shawl were dyed by my friend Heika. She's Stone Cold Coffee Crafts on YouTube and they are fabulous colors. They look so, so good. I don't think that I showed you in this filming but they're stunning the gray is super modeled and hopefully we'll get more of a of a you know gray section coming up those are the honeycombs aren't they pretty they're gonna look so good when they're blocked out oh my goodness um <laughs> so yeah that is that is that not to be confused with shawlography which is the one that I just finished can you see <laughs> can you see my favorite colors are clearly pink and purple. <laughs> I love wearing them. And this bag is from Michelle Bendy's D stash. Thanks, Michelle. That's that. That's everything. 
I'm sorry if I rushed that. Um, oh, and the black, sorry, the black is from Mothy and the Squid. I forgot to tell you. Um, it's Midnight Black. So, that's everything. It is now almost 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, at least I don't have to edit. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I hope that you enjoy your time here. I really enjoy reading your comments. Thank you so much for all of your supportive comments in the last video. It has been interesting. I did my first therapy appointment and I think that this is really going to be great. I can't talk about it online, but it's good. It's really good. That, that I can say. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to enjoy all the little things. Next weekend is Patty's Day, and if you celebrate, please stay safe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.